live, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting worldwide on this 30th day of August, 2000. And 15 will be here for the next two hours, as we are every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have a lot of election 2016 news to get to, a lot of Second Amendment news to get to. Some of it good, some of it bad. We have incredible political correctness to break down where they are moving forward in public schools, colleges, and workplaces, banning uh, he, she, boy, girl, husband, wife, father and mother saying the existence of father and mother is hateful to others that wouldn't be a father or mother i mean this is beyond newspeak beyond 1984 there's a daily caller article that's uh, excellent that i'm going to be going over today orwell's newspeak is coming to a campus near you newspeak is transforming fantasy to reality at the university of tennessee at knoxville george orwell's real name was eric blair he came from a prominent intelligentsia family. He was in uh, the secret police in India, and then he became a communist, fought in the Spanish Civil War against Franco and the Nazis. Then he was at the Ministry of Truth at the BBC, and basically Winston Smith is an allegory of his experiences and how he turned against communism and socialism, but also was always against fascism, showing how it was there to debase and destroy humanity and destroy language with political correctness and inverted uh, common sense. And that's what political correctness is. It's not a bunch of misguided idiots at the top that just are environmentalist wackos or whatever Rush Limbaugh calls them. Well, these wackos are taking over and have worldwide taxes and are running our lives. Oh, look at the idiots. They're saying they're banning the word, you know, father and mother, or boy and girl. They're not idiots. If they can ban the most basic things and demonize the biological imperative, they can do anything. I mean, imagine if you heard Jim Jones, the cult leader, wouldn't let people use the terms father, or mother, boy, or girl. You'd say, what a freak. What a control freak. But they do it, and it's normal. They've got to push the envelope a million miles. So even though we push back a half million, they still got us a million miles down a rat hole. We have to get really aggressive politically with these people. Now, that said, I don't have the staff to do it. It really is effective. If, if, if folks want to do this on YouTube and send us the link at show tips, that would be great. It's the old saying, the cobbler's, the cobbler's children, the shoemaker's children have no shoes. I spent about an hour today trying to find clips of it and just for some reason couldn't. I found articles we've written and maybe... They can print some of them, the crew, where we predicted all this. Um, I mean, it's not hard to predict, but it, it, it the reason we need to show us predicting it, I and mean, I know all you, the listeners, have heard us do it, is that for the sheeple that aren't awake yet, it's it's very effective to, to show them where we lay out exactly what's now happening. And if you go back to the dates of our crew in Ferguson and at other events, we should be able to dig out. Uh, where we predicted exactly what would happen. And and that, of course, is a race war in this country. And one has started. The fires aren't huge yet, but it's spreading across the country. And I want to talk about the strategy for a race war and why the system wants that so desperately when we come back. How that fits in to the larger globalist operation. And we talk about a race war... It's not like black people and white people lining up to kill each other. It's the triumph of brainwashing and controlled media getting unstable blacks and whites to go out and kill each other. And then the media won't even say the race of the people that are doing it when they're black. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live broadcasting worldwide on this 30th day of August 2015. And here's the headline at Infowars.com that says it all with the video clip of the sheriff on the news nationally. Uh, of course, uh, guest of this broadcast as well, now becoming really a national leader uh, because of his articulate, uh, educated, informed, libertarian slash conservative stance. And that, of course, is Sheriff David Clark, who I'd love to see run for president. I mean, this guy's really... 
has it down. I've seen him get up and give hour-long speeches to groups online. I've seen the speeches, and he just really knows what he's talking about. He doesn't have notes, doesn't have a teleprompter. Uh, he's the real deal, and just everything he says makes complete sense. He's really got it. And the video's up on Infowars.com. Sheriff David Clark, Barack Obama, started this war on the police. The Milwaukee County Sheriff said that Obama and Holder laid the groundwork for this war on police. We're going to be playing some of those clips coming up today. He also pointed out that Black Lives Matter was founded by communist organizations and the lady that they admit is their founding mother is in Cuba and is on the FBI's most wanted terror list for killing a cop and is involved with other groups organizing the killing of police. And you have to understand, the White House has been caught, and so is Hillary, and so is Nancy Pelosi, with their staffers inside Black Lives Matter at the national level, pushing this narrative with Al Sharpton and with MSNBC and CNN. So we know this is going on. I'm going to break down why this is happening in a moment. Because this is the key. If you understand the mindset of these people, and if you understand why they're doing this, and how they're getting away with it, then you understand everything else. You understand the culture of the socialists and the communists. You understand their worldview. You understand, most importantly, how to defeat them. Now, that said, here is the headline out of ABC News 13 in Houston. Suspect arrested and charged with fatally shooting Harris County Deputy Darren Goforth. A suspect in custody charged in Friday night shooting death of a Harris County deputy. At a press conference Saturday afternoon, Harris County Sheriff Ron Hickman announced that Shannon J. Miles, 30, a person who had been in custody since early Saturday morning, is charged with capital murder. Miles is accused, and did it in front of witnesses and on video, uh, so I don't think there's any accused about it, of killing Deputy Darren Goforth, 47, in northwest Harris County. Shot him three times in the back and then stood over him and unloaded the firearm. Investigators say Deputy Goforth had worked an accident scene at 8.30 p.m., then went to a gas station at Teagle and West Road. He was pumping gas, detectives say, when Miles approached Deputy Goforth from behind, said nothing, and fired multiple shots. Once he fell to the ground, authorities say Miles fired more shots at the deputy. Deputy Goforth was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, here's why this is important. Before I to get into why the White House is doing this. Friday and then Saturday when we had video of the guy, the news would just say a dark complected man. That's how politically correct this has gotten where major universities now are banning the word man and woman, boy and girl, he or she. I have that in the news today. And I know you've heard me talk about this for years, but now it's being done. It's not being proposed. It's being done. You have to understand this is a cult takeover, but it's scientific. These are not whack jobs. These are not, these are not people that, that are just forcing their agenda on us. This is a planned rollout. And you notice it's being done by the establishment bipartisanly. The Republican leadership is doing nothing to stop all this. So how does banning the word boy or girl, man or woman, from government documents and from use in universities, how does that tie to cop killing? I'm going to explain in a moment. But they wouldn't even say it was obviously connected to all these calls to go out and kill cops. I mean, every couple days, a police officer is shot in the back or shot in their patrol car or shot in their head or shot while they're helping somebody. It always seems to be when they're like helping, you know, in a wreck scene, whatever. And it's black people walking up and doing it. And it's being promoted and pushed by some of the new Black Panther Party and other organizations. Now, you have free speech in this country, but you don't have free speech to say, go out and start killing a particular group. That's a call to action. And I know it's popular to hate police. I understand that's pushed in the culture. I get criticized when I explain that just hating on the police will be basically manipulated and used by the globalists to bring this country down. And I'm going to break that down as well. We need to reform the police. We need peace officers, not enforcers, not tax collectors, 
There are a lot of problems. Society has a lot of problems. The globalists are at the head of this. They're the engineers of it. We need to change the policy, not hate police out of hand. There's a reason the globalists hate the police, and I'm going to explain coming up. But any time there's a totalitarian takeover, the main purge comes second of the police and military. So you want to see the police and military gone after? You're seeing the demonization of them right now, and that is the greatest sign that we're in deep, deep trouble, and a real, hardcore authoritarian takeover is going to happen. I've studied history, folks. They're following a blueprint, and I am getting chills right now. I don't say that for effect. When I really get on air and start focusing on the facts, it freaks me out, even though I was already ready and preparing to come in here today. When I really sit back and focus on it and look at it, it is so chillingly diabolical. That's why they have the term, chillingly. Because you get chills when you open up a basement and there's 10 dead kids. You get chills when you find the, the manifesto of a plan to carry out a terror attack. You get chills when you know there's evil happening. And the chills are endorphins and adrenaline being released to take action. My body, physiologically, when I look at these enemy plans, gets ready for fighting. Okay? Because that's how real it is, folks. I cannot express to you how serious this situation is and how close we are to the top completely blowing off and all hell breaking loose. The globalists have been preparing this for a long time, the takedown of America. And America's got some serious problems, but what they're going to replace it with is nothing less than hell on earth. It'll make the French Revolution look like a cakewalk. And the senseless murder to just walk up and randomly shoot somebody you don't even know in the back i mean yeah if a cop say raped one of my daughters hypothetically and 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 broke her back just, just hypothetically and then he didn't go to prison for that i might do something like that who wouldn't he didn't even know this guy and the media won't even say they're even the sheriff so politically correct down there in houston they are so politically correct that they're going, we don't know the motive, we don't know why. It's completely obvious. Breitbart's got the report. It's up on Infowars.com. Texas deputy executed days after black radical group calls for killing cops. I mean, this is all over the place. These same groups call for people to come after Infowars, folks. And what David Clark has pointed out is that radical Islamists, ISIS groups, hoods, thugs, hoodlums, the whole prison culture, the bad prison culture, there's a lot of innocent people in prison, but the really nasty perp culture is fusing with a bunch of misfits, I'm basically paraphrasing him, into this Black Lives Matter movement. When we've covered this, probably a third of the people are white or Hispanic who are out there wanting to rob stuff. We're going to go to break and come back with Sheriff Clark, and then I'm going to walk through all this, and then I'm going to break down why it's happening, the big picture. What's at the bottom of the rabbit hole? But I've got a bunch of videos of black people coming up and beating up white people for no reason, saying wrong neighborhood. Uh, this is all happening this week. This is happening all over the place. This is going on in Austin, and they cover that up. In fact, we've gotten contacted by affiliates that say this is the one issue that local government doesn't want on air. Is it open season on law enforcement in this country? Judge, I am too pissed off tonight to be diplomatic about what's going on, and I'm not going to stick my head in the sand about it. I said last December that war had been declared on the American police officer led by some high-profile people, one of them coming out of the White House, one coming out of the uh, uh, United States Department of Justice. And uh, it's open season right now. There's no doubt about it. Look, any time a law enforcement officer is killed, a little of every police officer in America dies along with them. And Sheriff, you know, as, as law enforcement across the country uh, uh, watches this, and, and I asked the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Hickman in Harris County, you know, in New York and in certain Baltimore and in Ferguson, you know, that, you know, uh, uh, no peace, no justice, no justice, no peace, and all the crazy marches and all the, you know, some of these organizations out there. Apparently in Harris County, this isn't something that was normal. I mean, it, it, can, can this happen anywhere in the country? Okay, that's Sheriff David Clark, and he goes on to say yes. And I'm going to get into problems with the police and how they can be reformed.
But the very globalists that have federalized and militarized our police that have run these